This presentation will demonstrate how to solve a standard minimum problem using the method of duality. Notice that we've changed the variable z to w because we're going to be minimizing w instead of maximizing z. The other variables, the y's, are used instead of x's. What makes a minimum problem standard? All the y's must be greater than or equal to zero. The inequalities among the constraints must be greater than or equal. And the numbers after the inequalities must be positive. Also, the coefficient of the y's in the w equation should be positive. In this case, they are 6, 18, and 4. Since we know how to solve standard maximum problems, our goal will be to transform this standard minimum problem into a standard maximum problem. We'll show you how you can get the solution to the standard minimum from the solution to the standard maximum. The standard maximum problem that we will be setting up will be called the dual of the standard minimum problem. The number of variables in this standard minimum problem is 3. That will be the number of constraints in the standard maximum problem. Similarly, the number of constraints in this standard minimum problem is 2. That will be the number of variables in the standard maximum problem. So in general, the number of variables in the standard minimum problem is equal to the number of constraints in the dual. And the number of constraints in the standard minimum problem will be the number of variables in the dual. Since the dual will have two variables and three constraints, you see that the template should look like this. Maximize z equals number times x1 plus number times x2, subject to three constraints, all of the form number times x1 plus or minus number times x2 is less than or equal to a number. All of the inequalities in the dual among the constraints must be of the less than or equal type since this will be a standard maximum problem. Now let's see how to place the numbers into the dual. The numbers 12 and 5 after the inequalities in the minimum problem become the coefficients of x1 and x2 in the z equation. So the dual reads maximize z equals 12x1 plus 5x2. Next, look at the coefficients of y1, y2, and y3 in the w equation. They become the numbers after the inequalities in the dual. 
the 6, the 18, and the 4 must go in order, reading down, in the dual. The coefficients of y1 in the constraints are 2 and negative 1. The 2 and negative 1 become the coefficients of x1 and x2 in the first inequality. So the first inequality reads 2x1 minus x2 is less than or equal to 6. Similarly, the coefficients of y2, the 3 and the 2, become the coefficients of x1 and x2 in the second inequality. So the second inequality is 3x1 plus 2x2 is less than or equal to 18. The coefficients of y3 are 1 and 0. There was no y3 in the second inequality. So the 1 and 0 then become the coefficients of x1 and x2 in the third inequality of the dual. So the third inequality reads 1x1 plus 0x2 is less than or equal to 4, or simply x1 is less than or equal to 4. You should now review how to solve a standard maximum problem. We will do so and then show how you get the solution to the standard minimum. This is the initial simplex table resulting from that standard maximum problem. Since there are three constraints, there are three slack variables, S1, S2, and S3. We begin by pivoting. The pivot column is the X1 column. And the pivot row will be the first row because of the ratios 3, 6, and 4, 3 being the smallest positive ratio. There are the row operations. And that's the new matrix. The X2 column is now the pivot column. And because you get only two positive ratios, the smaller being the two, the third row is the pivot row. Before continuing, we'll divide rows 1 and 2 by 2. The S1 column is now the pivot column. There's only one positive ratio. So we pivot on the number 2 in the second row, third column. Since there are no negative numbers in the X1, X2, S1, S2, and S3 columns from the bottom row, we have reached the final matrix. Now I will discuss how you get the solution to the given minimum problem 
from the solution to the dual. The maximum z is equal to 126 divided by 2, or 63. That turns out to always be equal to the minimum w. So the minimum w in this example is equal to 63. What's just as important is what values of y1, y2, and y3 give the minimum w. Look at the bottom row. This is where you will find the values for y1, y2, and y3. y1 is the number in the S1 column divided by the number in the Z column from the bottom row. So y1 is 0 divided by 2. y1 is 0. y2 will be the number in the S2 column divided by the number in the Z column from the bottom row. Y2 is 5 halves. And Y3 will be the number in the S3 column divided by the number in the Z column. So Y3 is 9 over 2. The solution to this standard minimum problem is The minimum w equals 63. This occurs when y1 equals 0, y2 equals 5 halves, and y3 equals 9 halves. I'll leave it to you to check that when you substitute 0 for y1, 5 halves for y2, and 9 halves for y3, in the W equation, you will get 63 for W.